Um, it looks like Andrew Schultz was recently on. Um, is it the guy called? I think his name is Arian Foster. Is it Arian Foster? Is that is that his real? Is that his name? I forgot his name. Bear with me a second. Is that his name? Arian Foster. Uh, I think it's Arian Foster. What's his name? Arian. Is it Foster? Is it Foster? Is his name Foster? Yeah, it is. Arian Foster. Cool. Arian Foster and PFT. So, Andrew Schultz was recently on Arian Foster, right? Talking to... Andrew, Andrew Schultz was recently on, sorry, was recently on Micro, Macro Dosing, which is a show, I guess, on Barstool with uh, Arian Foster and PFT um, from Barstool also. And he asked a very interesting question, I thought, regarding Rogan and how other comedians see Rogan. And I thought, to be fair to Andrew Schultz, as much as this sounded a bit cucky, I thought his answer was fairly, um, was fairly was 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 a fair was a fair answer, fair reply. As much as people think he was sucking up, I thought Andrew Schultz answered this the best way that he could, in terms of describing Joe Rogan's influence and on comedy and how he's kind of looked at, uh, you know, by other comedians, despite how big his podcast is. And I've got some interesting thoughts on how he kind of see the thing. So let's play the clip here again. Andrew Schultz reveals how he writes stand up, um, courtesy of microdosing with PFT and Arian Foster. Let's go. Go. But I've always, as a comedian, like, I've been on Rogan. Yeah, I, I know him, kind of. You know, I, I think I think he's a cool cat. Do comedians look at Rogan like a comedian? So, 100% yes. Okay. But you have to understand, like, a lot of... Okay, just on that intro alone, how refreshing is it to hear somebody speak about rogan in just that kind of general yeah he's cool i guess kind of way because i feel like in the, the today's society because everyone is so polarized and so much on either end of the flipping scale it's either you think joe rogan's a hack and he's shit and he's a waste of space overrated or you suck his balls more than anybody you know in your own flipping world right in your own flipping family it goes too much on either side of things. So I feel like he's kind of like nonplussed in the middle, kind of like, you know, impression of Rogan and not being too overawed by the celebrity, the notoriety, the influence or whatever it may be. It's kind of refreshing. And it also makes me think overall, this is a weird tangent to go on, but I wonder if that's the reason why Rogan seems to click more with the guys that he does um, save, your, save our parks with, this, in, you know, um, with what's it called mark norman um shane gillison ari shafir because at least with those three guys when they come on his pod they don't mind teasing him they don't mind making the butt of the jokes they don't mind having their own inside jokes and kind of talking amongst themselves and shooting the shit they don't go on rogan like acting like he's a deity right like bowing at his feet they just fuck around and fall around maybe that's why he has more fun because legitimately everybody around him is basically like a Schultz or like a Brendan where they lick in his ass continually. And it gets a little bit boring. It gets a little bit tiring. It gets a little bit lame. And, you know, whatever. You just want to spice it up a little bit. So maybe that's why he likes to save our parks guys a little bit. And maybe why also you might see Arian Foster on the show again soon, even though he sits on this podcast, he doesn't think Joe's funny. Maybe Joe actually enjoys it when people are actually a little bit, quote unquote, mean to him or unfazed by him or unmoved by him or just act normal to him because in his everyday life no one acts normal to him let's continue people found out about Ro this is what happens when you're podcasting when you're someone who doesn't know comedy or you're not like a big comedy fan right <laughs> i thought i legitimately thought he was gonna say if you're a civilian you just don't get it <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's gonna say civilians just don't understand how funny joe is but other comedians get it it's like oh come on but he didn't say that let's continue you know the most potent version of someone and obviously you know he has the biggest media platform on the planet yeah like it was just a crazy time in history where like one guy could garner that type of influence yeah. <laughs> and um and just shows, but it's like wishes he could go back in the time machine and be rogan in it and create a podcast back when he was starting 
he wishes he could have just instead of wasting time trying to get on MTV or you know successfully get on MTV and stuff and being a TV guy, he wishes he would have put all his efforts into podcasting super early. He probably does of it. It's like a comedy fan. Like just to put things in perspective, you know Bobby Kelly, amazing comic. You know Bobby Kelly. Mm-hmm. So uh, he doesn't know Bobby. When Kelly. he was on our pod, he was like, "Dude, I remember coming up in Boston and seeing Rogan and going, I want to be that guy." Mm. So that was the influence that he was having God. in that space, right? He just happens to be so famous at another thing right. that it, some people only get that version. It overshadows of it too. Of, think about it, of course. Yeah, because like <laughs> he he's not saying it the way that Shots is saying it though. Now I hear what he's gonna say because I think Shots thinks he's agreeing with him, but he's not. He's not agreeing with him at all. Listen to what Aaron Foster says about Rogan's comedy. In the realm of comedians, I think he's like he's, he's an okay comedian. But right. like, as a podcast, he's one of the most influential podcasters of Ever. all time. So it's like hard to parse that. And I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think what Aaron Foster saying here is legitimate, true, and it's not a bad thing. But I also think it kind of it's weird because with Joe Rogan, having watched a few of his specials and stuff, I would say in just some you know some bits and pieces of him acting and whatnot. I would say really controversial opinion to say this but i would say his earlier stand-up was made way better than what he does nowadays when he was like when he was looking like some you know like some jersey shore guy right he had a head full head of hair he looked super cute really handsome little earring in sometimes i think or those shirts on and shit he looked fairly fine i think he was way funnier back then but i think over time you know the his kind of version of funny on stage isn't really for me or isn't my cup of tea but i don't think he's unfunny I think people that go all the way out there and say Rogan is just not funny overall are being a little bit harsh. I think maybe his type of comedy, that humping a stool thing, the noises, the physical physicality of it all, the kind of, you know, intermingling some of his topics that he talks about in the podcast into stand up bits. It it's not it can be not your thing, but you can't say he's not completely funny. Like he's got definitely a lane. I feel like if you like that kind of comedy, you'll be into him. But I also feel like Rogan should be, I feel like, more people's, he should be more up-and-coming comedian's idol or inspiration than, like, the likes of Chappelle, the likes of Dave Attell, the likes of Chris Rock, the likes of Eddie Murphy, or whatever else. He should be way more of a motivation and a North Star because I feel like Rogan has wheeled himself into being a legit stand-up. Like he just went at it like he does everything else methodically, right? Every single day getting up, every single day writing new material, every single day reviewing and kind of fine tuning what he does. Like he approached it in a really kind of relentless way to the point where he kind of forced and willed himself into being a stand up comedian. And I feel like there are more people out there who are similar to Joe Rogan then there are are people that are out there similar to Louis C.K. I feel like those kind of like top tier comedians, they sort of like exist on their their own little kind of place. It's really hard to kind of emulate them. It's really hard to kind of try to follow their path because they're just really good. Like Chappelle, you know, starting when you're a teenager, it's just impossible to kind of catch up to that level of funny or to even emulate it or copy in any sort of meaningful way. Talent's talent. But I just feel like somebody like a Rogan, where maybe he's not his god given talent isn't to do stand up. I feel like just because he was obsessed with it for so long when he was younger, he kind of immersed himself in it fully. He's clearly a student of the game. He clearly watches people special. He's clearly tapped in, all that sort of malarkey. I legitimately think that should be way more of a model people should be following than trying to follow what Chris Rock does, trying to follow what Eddie Murphy does, Dave Chappelle, all these guys. They're just, you know, those guys are just talented from the womb it's really difficult to try and emulate that in my opinion and i feel like being a very successful podcaster and also being able to parlay that into stand-up isn't a bad thing either like who wouldn't want that who wouldn't want to have one of the biggest media platforms in the world where you can signal boost and you know effectively garner more eyes onto what you do potentially help to build up your fan base that could also kind of segue into people buying cold heart tickets to come and see you perform somewhere not such a bad thing for me personally. I don't think so. Part as, yeah. a, as a consumer, I think that's what the internet has done more than anything is it has allowed people to wear different hats. Yeah. But still, it's really hard to part that out as a consumer sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you got to watch Joe do stand up. Like, I think I tell people <laughs> you have to go watch Joe do stand up. Joe is 
underrated at stand up. Oh, really? I think what happens sometimes you become so. F- I like how the people within Joe Rogan's circle have an inability to understand why some people could just look at Joe objectively from the outside and just not rate him. Not rate the podcast, not think he's funny, and just be like, eh, not for me. They just don't understand it because for them, he's the greatest thing walking since, you know, whatever. And I feel like that for me is maybe the main reason why some of these guys can be a little bit insufferable because they don't come from it from an objective point of view or just, you know, would maybe plead the fifth or beg the differ and just kind of keep it moving. But they don't. But on one side, on the other side, sir, I also understand this because if you're Andrew Schultz and legitimately, you'd have to say Rogan for sure was responsible for the success that he's now getting. It's partly because I still maintain that Andrew Schultz's first appearance on Rogan, where I think he's wearing like a tracksuit jacket, I think it's like a red and blue one. Um, I feel like that was maybe one of the best debuts of an up and coming comic ever on Joe Rogan. Like he came on there on fire. He was the right combination of combative, the right combination of funny, the right combination of witty, insightful, smart, that it really kind of warmed. He kind of quickly in a short space of time really built a connection with Rogan to the point where Rogan fucking, you know, was at his wedding. You know what I mean? Like that's how quickly the day we came friends. I feel like it happened within a very short period of time, maybe less than five years. So he really did do a good job smashing it and going on there. But I feel like a lot of that kind of kind of combativeness he had and kind of playfulness he had with Rogan disappeared over time because he saw the influence and the impact Rogan was having in his career because he was a, a certain level of a comic. Then he went on Rogan and his career just like balloon do you know what I mean obviously he kind of did the hard work by creating the content and shit but Rogan I feel like overall is probably a platform that helps people out the most who are already creating content if you're already creating content if you already got stuff going on if you already got if you already, already if you already have quote-unquote pots you know pots and pans on the fire and then you go on Rogan he can legitimately help to amplify what you're already doing and because, you know, Schultz was already on this whole kind of social media, content creation, marketing type of tip, you know, whatever he was doing, going on Rogan definitely helped to kind of propel and, you know, help to add to whatever he had going on there. So he definitely utilized it the best way. So it's no surprise that he would be going out of his way to defend Daddy Rogan because Daddy Rogan legitimately paid for the wedding. Daddy Rogan legitimately paid for the honeymoon partially. Daddy Rogan legitimately paid for people's salaries in that studio. Like he legitimately changed this man's life. So I can kind of understand and appreciate why he would be on defense mode when it comes to Rogan. But as a viewer, as a viewer on the outside in, it does make me sick to my, it does make me have a little bit of sick taste in my mouth seeing these men go out of their way to defend another man like this. Like, I don't know, comedy is meant to be a little bit renegade, a little bit risque, a little bit naughty, quote unquote. And these guys, when Rogan's name is mentioned, the way they kind of buck and twerk and just go, you know, bend over backwards to defend him is kind of gross. I'm not going to lie. Famous, the people are looking for things yeah. to pull down. Okay. Right? And they can't say shit about the pot. Yeah. Because the pot is number one. So they just got to find something where they could pull you down. Mm. You got to watch Joe. And like, with everything to lose, with more to lose than most people in history have ever had, right. still doing the yes. wildest shit. Gotcha. Is it- Excuse me? Like, I should never take what's good. Schultz said Rogan has the most to lose out of everyone in history. Excuse me? Let's rewind that once again. Again, this is this is this is why people hate Rogan. I think Rogan has a similar issue that, you know, a Beyonce has or like a Taylor Swift. No one really is annoyed by Taylor Swift or Beyonce. It's mostly their fans. It's like Nicki Minaj, same thing. The barbs and stuff. They can get annoying after a while. These kind of stand fandoms, right? These fanatics that go out of their way to you know, inflate things and say this person can't do no wrong, defend them when they do horrible things, just really horrible and just, you know, whatever, right? They just become annoying. The same thing with Rogan. Rogan isn't that bad. The podcast is one of the best out there still. 
um, even to this day, um, especially when you get some good run of guests on there. Um, he seems like a pretty chill guy considering how wealthy and influential he is. If you gave, like I say it all the time, if you gave anybody else in that community of flipping you know, Jerry extended universe comedians, the same amount of money that Rogan has and influence and power, they would be absolute tyrants. Legit. We already see some of these guys already going crazy because they make, you know, a certain amount of money on Patreon. They've got a certain amount of music of YouTube. Just imagine if they were Rogan level rich. So Rogan's fairly chill guy across the board, I feel like. He has his errors and his faults, but he's pretty chill. The thing that makes people not like Rogan are his flipping fanboys. Those are the things that really make people hate Rogan. People like Schultz who can't be objective, can't maybe understand why some people don't like the show or don't really rate his comedy too much and say these hyperbolic, crazy statements as if Rogan's the only person to ever have anything to lose. And what the fuck is he talking about? Let's play it again. Just got to find something where they could pull you down. Mm. You got to watch Joe and like with everything to lose... <laughs> <laughs> With more to lose than most people in history have ever had, right. still doing the wildest shit. Gotcha. Is it if anything, I feel like that's a real mischaracterization of Rogan because if anything, Rogan actually is the epitome of fuck you money. He's got enough money where he doesn't need to go on stage and do flipping 10 minutes here and there or get some time. Like he doesn't need to do all this stuff. He doesn't need to do anything. He could just rock up to any club that he wants to perform when he wants to do it personally if he wanted to but the fact that he commits himself to this kind of grueling profession where you get on stage and you're only as good as your last performance and you put yourself into the scrutiny of millions of people by recording specials that you know basically get cemented in time regardless of how good or bad they, they are is quite commendable because anybody else with his level of wealth would be sitting in Cabo somewhere sipping on Mai Tais and whatnot, right? And just enjoying life. That's what they'd be doing. They wouldn't be doing what Rogan's doing, voluntarily doing flipping stand-up. He's got other things that he does, like sitting on his ass, talking to a microphone that probably make him way more money. He probably makes, you'd imagine, I think so, probably way more money podcasting than he does doing stand-up. It maybe it, it, I I could really accept, especially before you open up comedy mothership. I would even accept and be happy to believe if he said he legitimately makes more money recording podcasts than he does doing fucking stand up comedy, or he probably makes more money at the UFC because he doesn't even do many international dates. He probably makes more money salary wise there than he does fucking recording. They just doing stand up comedy. So clearly he's doing it for the love. Clearly doing it for the love. Maybe a lot of the attention also, but I think more so for the love of the craft and wanting to get better and whatnot and feed the fans, blah, blah, blah. That's actually commendable of him. Not the fact that he has more to lose, the fact that he's got everything and he's still doing that shit. The comics comic. The yeah, I, wildest shit. Yeah. I remember he, uh, yeah. he, like I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a dude that called out <laughs> Carlos Mencia, right? Oh, I remember. <laughs> look at Schultz. Yeah. Look at, Joe, I, look at Schultz. Do you, think, do you think there's, do you think you could find a clip? Do you think you could find a clip of Schultz smiling the way he's smiling now, talking about Rogan the same way that he's talking about his wife or his family? That's the thing that's a bit sickening with these guys. Like, even the Brendan thing, yeah? Like, you saw how he was sobbing and crying over fucking Chris Aaliyah being accused of being a legit diddler, right? And whatnot. Do you think those guys would react anyway to their own family members? you know, having something crazy happen to them, the way they react to the, these people who they've met in their adult years. Like, Schultz has only known, Brent, you know, Joe, you know, in a, in a somewhat friendly manner for five years. And look, look, look how much he makes him smile. Like, he legitimately puts a genuine smile and giddiness in these guys' faces and hearts. It's absolutely incredible. I remember he, uh, like, he, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a dude that called out Carlos Mencia, right? Oh, I remember, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that, that was, was that was very fun. Who do we have on part of my take we were talking to? But was it, uh, shit, was it Santino? Anyway, that's a clip for the most part. Um, I don't really have an issue with again with Schultz defending Rogan the way he did, because you know, hey, Rogan did really help his career. But I do feel like if you're out there and you don't think Rogan's comedy is that great, but you feel like his podcast is amazing, that's a fairly accurate. I think review or opinion of what he does because for the most part I feel like a lot of his stand-up success has been because of how popular his podcast has been I'd imagine a lot of people that listen to the him perform stand-up probably listen to the podcast also I would imagine there's a Hulk I don't think there's many stand I don't think there's many Joe Rogan stand-up fans that aren't also fans of his podcast I don't think they exist 
Whereas I think many comedians out there have fans who maybe don't tune into their pod a lot, but like to see them whenever they're in their town. So that's, but like I said, I think Rogan's real superpower and something he should be commended for is definitely his relentless pursuit to be a professional stand-up comedian, despite maybe not being naturally as funny as, you know, the people that we all know and love. I feel like that should be something that all people should be taking inspiration from. But I'm sure if you hear that sort of thing, it kind of sounds like a backhanded compliment a little bit, you know? So I can kind of understand why he probably wouldn't be so, you know, down with or, <coughs> sorry, or cool with people saying that to him. But hey, what can I do? Um, well, Severe Design says, yeah, I get what you're saying, but my concern is what's the 300 pages of evidence? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But yeah, that's just my opinion on it. I'm sure I'm wrong, but hey, you know, you've got to throw out your little two pences here and there.